Back up to Jackson Heights. There's a scout troop show that child cruise ships to when I go wild. Car 54, where are you? been a good year for the precinct. We've had our moments of glory, and we've had our moments of disaster. Fortunately, headquarters has recognized our moments of glory, and they've okayed every one of my recommendations for citations. Sergeant, the honor roll. Patrolman Ed Nicholson and Walter Wallace citation. For spotting and recovering 11 stolen cars within the year. A new precinct record. Pleasure, men. Thank you, Captain. Thank you, sir. Dismissed. Patrolman Leo Schnauzer. Citation. For heroism in single-handedly apprehending a hold-up suspect while off duty. Good work, Leo. Here. I'm ashamed to take it. Leo. What heroism? I'm in Gold Bike Cigar Store passing the time of day when in walks this clown, opens up a mouth, and says, hold up. I grabbed him by the collar and brought him in. This is a heroism. Leo, he had a gun pointed at your heart. That gun, you could see where it still said U.S. plywood on the side. I don't deserve it. Leo, you are facing a desperate stranger. What well, stranger? It's the tenth time I picked him up in the same cigar store. It's getting boring. Leo. What does he want from me? I can't go into gold bikes anymore. He follows me around like a dog. Leo, do you want it? I'll take it. Thanks. Patrolman Michael Rodriguez and Leonard Keegan. Citation. For excellent work in the Fordham supermarket burglary. Go to take it, Ward. Sergeant Anthony Barbella, citation for aiding in the capture of three burglary suspects while off duty. Proud of you, Tony. Patrolman Al Simpson and Ed Peterson, citation for work beyond the call of duty in the 4th of July riot. <laughs> Patrolman Paul Polino, citation for outstanding achievement in controlling traffic in Sector 4. Police clerk Alex Singer, citation or his perfect attendance record. <laughs> Thanks. That's all, Captain. Oh, the rest of you dismissed. I said dismissed. What are you two waiting around for? Well, I was waiting for Gunther. And what are you waiting for? Haven't you forgot something, Captain? Forget what? My citation. Your citation for what? For having the cleanest locker. Congratulations, <laughs> but I'm not giving out a citation for having the cleanest locker. But you gave one out last year. Last year we had mice. <laughs> but wait. Boys, I know it's rough standing around watching everybody else get citations, but police work is a matter of breaks. You two just don't happen to be around when a crime is committed. I would. Just continue doing your assigned duty and your captain will be proud of you. Yes, sir. Man Tootie, keep your locker clean. Let's not bring back the mice. <laughs> yes, sir. Snap out of it. What a record we're hanging up, Francis. Nine years out of force without a citation. We ought to get a citation for that. Look, Gunther, it's like the captain says, we patrol a pretty quiet sector. The people in our sector are all pretty friendly. They, they just don't commit crimes. Some friends. I bet they commit crimes without even telling us. Come on, sign out and let's go home. Let's go home. Let's go home. That's been our problem all the time. We never do any off-duty work. Francis, it would give us a chance to get out of the car. We could rub shoulders with crime. Gunther, what are you getting at? Well, tomorrow's our day off. Instead of just sitting around, let's put on plain clothes and snoop. You snoop. I'm staying home tomorrow and watching the World Series on television. Oh, boy, some cop. If J. Edgar Hoover had your drive, he'd be directing traffic someplace. <laughs> Come on, sign out and let's go. Come on. Wait, this might be a break. Andy, well, what is that? Just a bulletin from headquarters. I'll take it, Andy. Pick up the dailies. Yes, sir. Anything important, Captain? It's a request for any of my personnel who are off duty tomorrow to volunteer for special detail. Special detail? Yes, you see. Tony, you're through for the day. Did you sign out yet? <laughs> yeah, I just signed out. Good. I'd hate to think I was chatting with you on taxpayers' money. Oh, Captain, they want volunteers. <laughs> Yes, with the championship fight at the Garden and the World Series starting tomorrow up here at the Yankee Stadium in the Bronx, there'll be thousands of out-of-towners coming into New York. 
And that means that every pickpocket in the country will be here, too. They want us to put every available man we have in plain clothes outside the Yankee Stadium. Ooh. Ooh. It's out of the question. Cap, you didn't even know what I was going to say. You said, ooh, ooh, that's enough for me. <laughs> I found that when you say, ooh, ooh, and I don't say no immediately, there's always trouble. All I want to do is volunteer. Forget it, Tootie. Plain clothes work is not for you. How could I ever perform acts beyond the call of duty when you never let me get out of uniform? All right. I guess when a man volunteers to give up his day off... Oh, thank you. Wait a minute, wait, wait. Uh, Muldo? Yes, sir. Uh, Tootie is volunteered for plain clothes duty outside the Yankee Stadium tomorrow. I want you to go with him. But, sir, I planned on staying home watching the World Series. I planned on playing golf. Now, with Tootie out on the street, I'm going to spend the day in prayer. <laughs> Muldoon, you're going with him. But, sir, I didn't volunteer. I want you to volunteer. That's an order. Yes, sir. We make a great team in uniform, and we'll make a great team of play clothes. Captain, you're going to be proud of us. Tootie, I haven't the slightest illusion that you're going to arrest anybody. Just promise me one thing. What is it? Don't get arrested yourself. <laughs> Don't get arrested yourself. Francis, I'm going to make the captain eat his words. Come on, let's go. Sir, I have something in my eye. <laughs> Thank you, sir. You're very kind. Say, uh, uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, is that your hat? <laughs> oh, yes, that is your hat. Sorry. Say, you pardon me, uh, I'm not familiar with the local bird life. Is that an Eastern evening gross beak? <laughs> no, I'm afraid that's just a pigeon. Get your souvenirs. Get your Yankee souvenirs. Can't enjoy the game without a World Series souvenirs. I want a Mickey Mantle doll. Don't bother me. Get out busy. Get your souvenirs. I want a Mickey Mantle doll. Get it somewhere else. I'm busy. Get your souvenirs. Get the Daddy, Daddy, he won't sell me a Mickey Mantle doll. Quiet, kid, you're attracting attention. What is this? He won't sell me a Mickey Mantle doll. I told the kid I'm busy. Busy? Doing what? Mind your own business. And what is your business? Whatever it is, it's not yours. <laughs> Do you mind? Do you mind? I want a Mickey Mantle doll. Something fishy going on here. I'm going to call the police. Call it. Go ahead, kid. Pick out any doll you want. I want this one marked 50 cents. Here's a dollar. Wait a while. You give me a dollar, and this is 50 cents. Let's see how much change you get. I get 50 cents change. I knew it. I knew it. I just wanted to see if you knew it. Pretty smart kid you got there. Okay, you get 50 cents change. Oh, oh, I got one. I got a pickpocket. I got one. Why did you pick the wrong customer? Officer Tutty, 53rd Precinct. How do you do? Eddie Water, Chicago. I'm in real estate. You're in my pocket. That is where you are. And you are a policeman all the time. Hang on to that for a while. I'm going to take him out to the wagon. There's plenty more where he came from. Let's go. What happened? What happened? An officer in plain clothes just nabbed a pickpocket. Yep. Outside Yankee Stadium. Gate two. Check. Wagon will be here in a few minutes. I'll wait. You hope you don't take this personal. I'm just doing my duty as a policeman. And what a sacred duty it is. I know. When I was a kid, it was my big ambition to be a policeman when I grew up. But the trouble is, when I grew up, I didn't grow up enough. I took the police physical, I was three inches short. Three inches. That's the difference between being a great cop and Feather Fingers Featherton, an unsuccessful <laughs> pickpocket. Those are the brakes. What a great cop I'd have made. I'd have been tough, but fair. I'm sure. I'd have made Elliot Ness look like somebody out on bail. You could have used a man like you. The kids on my beat would have loved me. They'd have said, there goes Officer Featherton, our protector and our friend. If you're only three inches taller. 
I what a cop I'd have been. I've got policeman's eyes, you know. Policeman's eyes? I got blue eyes that turn to steel gray when there's trouble. <laughs> I didn't notice. What a cop I'd have been. With what I know now, with my experience, I could have every pickpocket cleaned out of New York in 24 hours. Here comes the van. Hi. Come on. Come on. Officer Tootie, 53rd Precinct. I just nailed this pickpocket. What up, Tootie? He stole my wallet and shield. Sure, sure. Did you ever hear such an old dodge? I suppose he stole the keys to the handcuffs, too, huh? That's right. He did. Come on. What up, Tootie? 53rd Precinct. Now, he sounds almost convincing. Officer, look at the two of us. Which one looks like a pickpocket and which one looks like a cop? In you go. But you're making a mistake. I'm telling you, I'm a policeman. Inside, inside. I'm telling you, I'm a policeman. Quiet in there. Francis. 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 Up a nasty one. Just doing my duty. Let's go. <laughs> what a sacred duty it is. Got another one, huh, Tootie? This is just the beginning. When that's full, come back for another load. Good work, Tootie. Just doing my duty. Let's go! Twenty years, and I never in my life seen a cop who knew every angle. That's right. I was pulling my neatest trick, and he grabbed me so quick you'd have thought I was trying to pick a pocket wearing a catch's mitt. Tootie, that pink. Who got you, pal? Tootie. Bad. Dirty, no good, copper. It's no good. It ain't fair. Something ought to be done to a loss like that. Yeah. That's right. Patrolman Tootie. What has he done? He's arresting pickpockets as fast as the wagons can bring them in. Those he hasn't arrested yet are leaving New York in droves. <laughs> yes, sir. I'll, I'll be there, sir. Is Tootie in trouble? Trouble? Tootie, you're talking about a man who is going to be personally cited by the chief at headquarters the minute he gets off duty. Do I look all right? Yes, sir. Good. There'll be newspaper men and photographers there. Well, I've got to get down to headquarters. Jeez. I gotta talk to you. Hold it. In here. Another batch of tootie nails. All right, line up over there with the others. I gotta get back. <laughs> 
I'm a policeman. Oh, you were a policeman. I thought you were Roger Maris. <laughs> Over there with the others. You're a fellow officer. You understand the spot I'm in. The pickpocket that I nailed lifted my wallet shield. Lifted? Brother, I've heard stories, but... But this is true. I'm a policeman out of 53rd Precinct. Why don't you get yourself identified? You're allowed one phone call. Why don't you call up your captain and tell him you were arrested? Tell Captain Block I've been arrested? Oh, I couldn't do that. Of course not. Now get over there with the others. We're going to miss you this year at the policeman's ball. But I tell you, I'm a cop. Okay, so you're a cop and they're robbers. And until we need you for the lineup, why don't you go over there and play cops and robbers? Wait. I'm allowed one phone call, right? Right. I got somebody who can identify me. Can I have a dime? Why don't you pick somebody's pocket? Kidding. You mean you actually arrested somebody? <laughs> oh no. Oh no! Francis, you gotta come down here and identify me before they put me in the lineup. If Captain Block ever finds out that I was arrested, I'm telling you, Francis, I'd rather go to Sing Sing and have him always think that I was gobbled up by the big city. <laughs> I'll be there right away. Got himself arrested. Yogi swings. Yogi Berra strikes out. Line him up. Line up. All right, line up. You should certainly be proud of Tootie, Captain. Well, really, Chief, I just trained my men to do their duty. I just spoke to Tootie personally about his citation later. And at this moment, he's cleaning out pickpockets and running out of the square gun. You'll be here later. This is part of the batch he brought in. Some of these men we've been trying to nail for years. Captain. No, 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 no. Captain, let me explain. No, don't tell me. Just don't tell me anything. You make me cry. Captain Mark, what is it? The newspaper men, photographers, what do they do? They're here already. They're downstairs in the main bullpen. I thought a picture of Tootie and uh, you, of course, in front of all the men that he picked up. Chief. Before you talk to those newspaper men, I think you better talk to this man. Who is he? Tony. Quick, follow me. <laughs> Officer Muldoon, 53rd Precinct. I have to make an identification. There they are. Go right ahead. Say, was the sort of a short, round-faced guy here? Kind of stupid looking. That's the one. Where is he? A captain and chief inspector came in here and took him away. Oh, no. Say, this captain, uh, what did he look like? Like he was about to have a nervous breakdown. Captain Block. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. The pickpocket stole your badge. How could a thing like that happen? Chief, if you knew Tootie, it had to happen. And the pickpocket who got your badge? He's out arresting other pickpockets. Well, that's nice. You should have given your badge to a bank robber. Then he'd be out arresting other bank robbers for us. We need bank robbers more than we need pickpockets. <laughs> yes, sir. You've got to have Tootie or whatever his name is picked up. I sure hate to lose him. Then we'll have to think of something to tell the reporters. Come on. Why didn't you stay with Muldoon? Why didn't you stay with Muldoon? Yeah, but you must have heard something. Didn't they mention where they were taking him? They just whisked him out of here. Boy, he must have been hot. All right, this way. Keep moving. Then the captain keeps mumbling that. No, no, don't tell me. Don't tell me. Yeah, go on, go on. Then the captain whispered the name of this inspector or something like that. Quiet, face run. That's him, that's him. I know him anywhere. That's him. I know him anywhere. He took my cash box. Now, wait a minute. Okay, Slim, step forward. Who, me? He was hanging around my stand, and the minute my head was turned, 
That's it. He had the cash box and was away. It's a mistake. I'm police officer Francis Muldoon of the 53rd Precinct. I got my identification. Ah, that's an old dodge. He knows we use police officers in the lineup, so people won't come in here and accuse just anybody at all. It's a mistake. Quiet. He must have heard somebody call my name. Now, who are you? Officer Muldoon of the 53rd Precinct. He stole my wallet. I'm Muldoon. Back on duty, Muldoon. Right, Sergeant. Stop him. He stole my wallet. Take him away. I'm Muldoon. You're a robber of hot dog stands. That's what you are. The police officer Francis Muldoon. Here they come. Sorry, we're late, gentlemen. That's all right, Chief. What a story. Is this Tootie? Did you make him a captain already? No, this is Tootie's captain. The man responsible for everything. Where's Tootie? You see, we've decided against all publicity. It would nullify Officer Tootie's value to us. Well, wait, Captain. How about a picture of you? All right, Captain. Stand right there. That's it. Is this all right? That's good. Right in front of the tall one. <laughs> Oh. Captain Mark. No. no. Don't tell me I've had enough for one day. Captain Mark. No. No. Captain, what is it? All they want is one picture with this tall peg pocket. Oh, big pocket. Chief. No. 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 Release this man. Here's your badge. It's a good thing we got a good guard on the outer door. There he is, Chief. That's the guy. Officer Tootie, 53rd Precinct. We know who you are. You're a thief. That's what you are. Come on, I'm booking you personally. Wait. Inspector, on the phone you mentioned something about a citation? I wish I could give you one. Oh, that's all right. I'm ready to take my punishment. What's 90 days after what I've had? I want you all to know you've made my dream come true. I've proved what a great cop I would have been. Chief, can I talk to this man alone? Of course. I'll be down the hall, son. Son, I want you to know that if you were in my precinct, you'd have made a great cop. Thank you. Of course, with what I've got in my precinct, Jack the Ripper would have made a great job. I want you to know I'm going to jail. A happy man. Well, let's go. Well, do you have your wallets, your badges? Yes, sir. Well, until you get back into uniform, I want you to hold onto them with both hands. Yes, sir. And if anyone calls Tutty or Muldoon, just run. Run? Don't look around, just run. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's go. Precinct. Okay. Muldoon, 53rd Precinct. Okay. Captain Block, 53rd Precinct. Who are you, kid? You're not Captain Block. I'm not Captain Block. Captain Block just left here. A little guy with glasses. Uh, I want it. Yeah. He heard that before. Well, here's my shield. Huh? He got my shield, too. Okay, buddy, let's go. Tootie, Muldoon! Tootie, Muldoon! Muldoon, Tootie! Come back! Come back, Tootie! Muldoon, come back! Come back, Tootie! There's a holdup in the Bronx. Brooklyn's broken out in fights. There's a traffic jam in Harlem that's backed up to Jackson Heights. There's a scout troop short a child cruise ships to Wild Idle Wild. Car 54, where are you?